Hello and welcome back to Imperion Galactic Survival. My name is Spange and welcome back to um, this moon that I ended the last episode on. I'm quite annoyed with myself actually uh, because I have found precisely what I was looking for in the last episode except I ran out of time in the last episode. Who knew it was literally just the other side of the, this moon. Um, I could have had the, the damn Sathium I was looking for this whole, this whole time. Uh, what I have found here is a crashed capital vessel. This is what I was looking for. This or an abandoned POI, in fairness, uh, but this will do nicely. So I've dug it out a little bit, as you can see, just to check if there are thrusters on it. And there is a thruster on it there, and there is more in there. And then I've slapped a core on it, just like we did with the POIs over there. This thing doesn't have a core in it. So uh, I put my own in, and bingo. We can see that this thing has 155 Sathium in it somewhere. Now, the one sort of negative component about this particular thing is it's buried half in the ground. However, that's no problem for someone with an epic drill like me. Now, we do have a number of thrusters on this thing. Each of these, I believe, will have the Sathium we're looking for in it. I don't think any of the other devices are going to have any Sathium in them. Apart from maybe the cargo boxes and stuff, which might have like a Sathium plate or something in there. Anyway, um, I've connected to one of the boxes in there because unfortunately the nightshade is absolutely jam-packed full of jam. Um, so I'm going to pick this up, but connected to... <laughs> well, I thought it was connected to the cargo box here, but clearly I wasn't. So there we are, we are now. Okay, I'll chuck that straight on my bar there. I'm just watching these two drones coming in. And then chuck that into the factory and it doesn't contribute anything because that's not what the satium is in. That's, that's, no, there you go. Just fire my drill at that drone, no big deal. Well, this is going to hurt my generators. Unfortunately, the drones will keep coming. Generators are 87% health now. You might be thinking, hey, Sponge, why, if you can just dig this thing out, why can't you just fly it out of here, you know? Why build a whole new ship? This one looks like it's in reasonably good condition, apart from, you know, the 1,700 hole breaches that it's got. Point is, you've got a fairly decent looking ship here. You could just salvage it and fly it out of here. Well, that would be nice, but unfortunately, that is not the way the game works. This is technically, as far as the game is concerned, a base, and therefore it is incapable of flying. Just the way the spawning mechanic works in order to load this thing under the ground. You can't actually spawn or get the game to load a capital vessel under the ground. So uh, in order to get the effect that this thing has crashed into the ground and has been here for a long time, they need to bury it. That then prevents it from being, you know, an actual operational CV. Unfortunately, this thing ain't going anywhere. I just remembered something you're probably yelling at me in the comments. You can see the block types here under the CPU statistics. You can see everything that contributes to the CPU. Well, if you know that uh, Combat Steel in particular has uh, Sathium in it, we can see that there are there are 31 Combat Steel blocks somewhere on the ship. Finding them, however, not so easy. It's not a device that I can set a waypoint onto. Um, you just have to kind of scan them until you find them. And every block so far just appears to be steel, uh, which, is, which is making it slightly difficult. Uh, to locate these combat steel blocks. Now, if I was combat steel blocks, I'd be on the front of the ship, right? Are you flying away? It looks like it. I'd be on the front of the ship. Um, if I built this thing, they'd be on the front of the ship anyway, at least uh, where they truly and actually are. Hmm. I guess uh, we just have to actually find out. But yeah, this is taking a little while longer than I expected it to. Bingo. Found them. They're back here. They're in what used to be the warp core area. I suppose that makes some sense. You protect the most explosive part of the ship with combat steel blocks. Yeah, alright, maybe. Uh, okay, so we're going to actually retrieve the blocks here. They will get us the net, the best result. So combat steel block there, there you go. And then we put that in there and bingo, it's contributing to the Sathium. So if we rip up every one of these that we can find, hopefully we'll have enough Sathium for the ship. I think this is it, ladies and gents. Nine Sathian plates there, just to be sure. Bingo. Start production. And because I got my setting to produce things instantly, there we have it. We have 
a capital vessel in our factory ready to spawn in. That's fantastic. Okay, so I've got a lot of junk here uh, of stuff and things, and, and I don't really need it. And the nightshade's already full, so what the hell do I do with it? Well, yeah, we're going to use the factory once again. And it's a little cheesy. But it's part of the game. And I did spend the time unlocking all those components and stuff like that to bring it in, so I'm not too upset about it. What are we going to need once we get our capital vessel in? Oh, we're going to need something to blow stuff up with, right? <laughs> We get something to blow stuff up with uh, on planet or in space. I mean, the in space option is generally the more flexible of the two. The question as well I have is, the hell do I bring in? There's so many to choose from. Well, I must admit, I have kind of been neglecting the whole vanilla combat SV genre for a while now. So... I'm looking at the Charger here, which is part of my Scavenger Alliance set. This is a pretty speedy ship. Now, this one was built for Reforged here. Uh, it should still be doable in uh, vanilla, however. Quite easy to convert, to be honest. Um, so I think I'm going to go for this. Now, this requires quite a lot of stuff to unlock here. Getting minigun turrets and lasers and landing gears and stuff like that. Tier 4 extenders. It is, after all. Tier 4 Beast, although I think it's uh, because it's reforged, it registers as Tier 3. Uh, so I need to do some modifications to it, but I can at least start putting things in the factory for it. And therefore I can use all the stuff that I've got here in the nightshade, just loitering and filling up boxes. And of course what I loot and salvage from the crashed capital vessel here. No reason not to use that. Um, I'm just going to top the fuel tanks up a second because they're looking a little, a little low. Um, but yeah. That's what we're going to go for, the Charger. It is a hit and run fighter bomber. It is a chunky piece of equipment and more than capable of taking out any POI I think the vanilla game has. So here we go. The usual routine now, I suppose, isn't it? Minigun turrets, lasers, rocket launchers, homing rocket launchers. Don't need the drill modules, but probably need like all the thrusters, including the jets, the mediums and the large. Don't think I need the XLs, the CPU extenders, passenger seats, armored cockpits, landing gears. Hmm, that should be it. And indeed, it has lit up. Lit up. Like that's a word. <laughs> there we go. We've added the charger to the factory. So I could do the same old as what I've been doing all along and just adding things here into the bar and dropping them into the factory. Lame throwers do not contribute. Okie dokie. Oh, there we go. And that is pretty much it then, I think. Now, I did treat myself here to a couple of console, deco consoles that I salvaged from the ship because I know that they sell for about 500 to 900 credits. Uh, it's one of those uh, traders that we found also on this moon. The moon seems to be pretty rich, really, when it comes to it. Only one crashed capital vessel, though. It's a bit stingy, but we'll make it work and everything will be fine. Okay, so I think the uh, all the boxes are done here. I'm just going to go through one last round and make sure um, that I've salvaged everything that's worthwhile in this thing and chucked it in the factory. Yeah, before we head back to spawn our ship in, I am going to go ahead and sell those deco blocks that I managed to pick up. Do them at six at a time, but that's fine. Give me that money. Five grand, five grand, five grand. Bingo. Lovely stuff. Thank you very much for your business. Mr. Android Dude Person Dude. I'll see you later. Oh, here she is. Donk. Oh, yes. He is in the capital vessel. Here she is. The Hammerhead Corvette, ladies and gentlemen. One of my old builds from yonder, I don't even know when, <laughs> I can't even remember where, when I built her, but uh, it was a while ago, um, and she still looks hot. Yes. Now, we've got a lot of work to do. When haven't we got a lot of work to do, huh? That should be the more, uh, more accurate statement. There is always a lot of work to do, now more so than ever. The uh, ship being in is one thing. Operating it is an entirely different thing. 
This thing requires a lot of fuel, a lot of ammunition, and a lot of everything. But don't worry, we're going to transfer everything that's in our base into here, and we're going to live out of here from now on. Let me give you the tour if you've never seen the hammerhead before. Um, that's fine. Like I said, it is a bit of an old build on the workshop of mine. Um, but um, yeah, still pretty effective. It is missing a few things though, and I'll go into those in a minute. First up, as we go into the ramp here, we've got our oxygen station and an oxygen tank in this side. There is also uh, a ramp on the other side with the same setup here. Um, it's just a symmetry thing. <laughs> There's no functional reason for having two entry ramps. It just looked cool. Uh, and then we come into the sort of main sort of production area here. It isn't very big, as you can see. It's quite, quite neat and tidy, really. Uh, we've got a nine plot garden here with bridge, food processor, everything we need. Um, to grow some crops. Got a space for a large constructor here. And then we've got a cargo box, small constructor, and a 320 KSU container right there. Behind this hidden little shutter door is the gravity generator, as you can see, hiding its radiation and its worry worriness away from sight. Back here, uh, we've got our engineering section. Here's our core and our T2 CPU, plus our warp drive. There's also fuel tanks and generators in here, and there is room to expand uh, in here as well. Specifically, there is a space over here for your T tier 3 CPU upgrades. Um, and then if we go through up here, we have our bridge area, which is spacious, as you can see. And there's upgradability here as well. These LCDs will actually describe what to do. But essentially, these walls come out and they're replaced with container extensions when you can afford the CPU to do so. Otherwise, you've got plenty of crew slots here if you want to add crew to the ship and make it a little bit more alive. And now though, just a um, pretty good frontal view, pretty poor left, right and up view, unfortunately. Um, but that's just the shape of the ship. We carry on up, got another sort of split level floor here. Uh, double back on ourselves, we've got our little detector tucked away in there, but up here we've got a full medical suite uh, with all the medical devices. Bed, an armor locker, an oxygen station up here, with toilet and shower as well if we need to cleanse radiation or food poisoning. And then finally, carry on up back through the back door here, we have a landing pad on the back. Fit for a certain nightshade. Now at the moment the shield is non-existent, it doesn't have one. It also doesn't have the CPU in order to support one either. We jump into this hatch that's hidden at the bottom here, we come into a section behind the warp core, where the shield goes it's very sneakily lots of right in there um but yeah like i said we can't actually afford one from a cpu point of view at the moment if we have a look at that we're already over by 400. now the ship will operate fine at 99 percent efficiency but adding any adding anything more to it is just going to send it off into a wild spiral so the first thing that we need to do really is get its cpu up so that we can um Add a shield to it. Uh, so, what do we need to do that? First of all, let's check our tech tree and make sure that we have unlocked uh, the next CPU tier, which is tier three. And yes, we have. There it is, unlocked. Now, let's check our constructor. What are we missing and why can't we build this? There it is, there, CPU extended tier three for a CV. And it says we're missing 14 flux coils, two large electronic bridges. Well, the flux coils, I believe, are mostly Neo based. I'm surprised that we're out of. Yeah, we're out of Neo. <laughs> Freaky. We're out of Neo. Uh, and the large Optronic bridges, well, yeah, that's no surprise either. Why is a small Optronic bridge, which requires oscillators, which is Neo. Um, and then another 80 oscillators. And a Scosium alloy. Oh, you son of a gun. Okay. So we have a little bit more mining to do then. Let's find us some Zascosium. I know instantly where we can find some of that. That's back on Simos, that very hostile, Xerax infested, barren metal planet. There's Zascosium there. Um, no Neo. We're going to have to go back, I think, to uh, the asteroid field here and carry on mining that Neo asteroid there. Uh, still, um, we should be able to take the ship anyway. Or we could just take the nightshade. The thing we're taking the ship is we could store a hell of a lot more. Um, with a small constructor on board, we can at least start processing it down. Uh, we won't be able to build anything like the CPU extenders with it or anything like that. But, uh, you know, we can start processing it down. It does also have 
four Gatling turrets on it. So it is rather well defended. Um, despite the fact that it doesn't have a shield. I think it's worth it though. And then as soon as we can build or install the advanced constructor, uh, we should do that. We should swap this one over to the ship, basically. So actually, the, sh the, the, the base is going to stay for a little while, isn't it? And what we're going to do is we're going to put some stuff into uh, the container controller here so that we can at least get it going. Let's do this the other way around, actually, because then we can access the fuel tank. We can't access the fuel tanks and stuff from over here. We have to do it. it has to be on the right-hand side. There's reasons, you know. Uh, so we have a actually in the cargo pallet here a number of fusion cells that should fill the fuel tank right up. We have a number of oxygen tanks as well somewhere. Hmm, eight. We're gonna need some more. Thirty-four of those fills it right up. Beautiful. And pentaxid. Hmm. Oh dear. Well, you know where there is some pentaxid, and that's in the pentaxid tank of the nightshade. Well, <laughs> it will um, it will get us around, but uh, yeah, it's going to cost us. Still, it should do. Now, then, the ammo box on the hammerhead also needs to be filled with some 15 mil and some rifle rounds. There we go. Let me sort by item type, and that will be easier to navigate then. Rifle rounds are for the sentry guns that are placed on the bottom of the ship. These guys protect from ground threats when the ship is la landed. And the main guns here will protect from everything else, regardless of whether it's landed or not. I'm going to double check under devices here what my turrets are set to. Indeed, they're set to predators. I only want the sentry guns doing predators, really. I've just noticed as well that two of these guns are actually cannon turrets. Well, that just simply won't do. We're going to have to deal with that. So I'm going to connect to the container controller on the hammerhead and I'm going to remove these cannon turrets. I'm going to use my drone. And I'm going to swap them out for gat turrets. Well, what's the difference between gat turrets and cannon turrets, I hear you ask? Well, not much. They both provide the same amount of DPS, but having one type of turret on your ship means you only have to produce one type of ammunition and not two types of ammunition. So the Gats generally fire faster and they generally hit things better, in my opinion. You may dispute that. That is fine. That's what the comment section down below is for. Um, have at it. I prefer Gatling turrets. That's just the way it is for me. Right, so I'm going to transfer some extra fuel over and um, some extra oxygen if I've got it. Hmm. I think we might need to raid our little O2 generators here. Yep, there we go. And um, I'll load up with some extra tool ammo and stuff like that. And then I think we can set off. Um, there we go. Yeah, multi-tool chargers, personal oxygen tanks, sniper rifle rounds. I need them on me, really. The brush stone for some reason. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're going to head out and we're going to head back to the asteroid field first, pick up some Neo. We're going to then head straight over to Simos and see if we can hit up some Discosium without being shot out of the sky. Wish me luck. Alright folks, here we go. The maiden voyage. The hammerhead. Yeah, <laughs> very swift lift off. <laughs> it's, got some, uh, it's got some thrust. A little bit of thrust. It should be fine. I should probably explain something that I should have explained like in episode one. And I'm so sorry that it's taken me this long. I did see some comments in it, which has actually reminded me that I need to explain this. It's one of those things that I so take for granted uh, that I don't even realize I'm doing it. Um, and that is the free look camera. Now, when you are in normally, when you move the mouse around, it moves the ship around. Um, so if you're new to the game, you might be like, well, how the hell do you do that? Well, that's just simply by pressing the Alt key on the keyboard. It releases the camera and allows you to free look around. But there's a little bit more to it than that. If you use the mouse wheel, you can then zoom in and out. And if you use page up and page down, you can reposition the camera up and down, depending on where you want the chase camera to actually sit. You don't actually have to press Alt for the last two, to be fair. Um, it does it straight off the bat. 
But there you go. Alt enables free look around your ship. You can also steer your ship while in Alt using the arrow keys as well. So, you know, if you are doing a little maneuver where you need to fit in a tight spot or line up perfectly, then you can use Alt in combination with WSD and the arrow keys in order to get that perfect alignment. Anyway, sorry that that's taken me that long to, to explain how I've been doing that. But there we are. Uh, right, we're going to connect to container controller here. I'm going to mine some Neo. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Simos. Now we have to be just as careful here now as we were before when we were here in the nightshade once again we are flying around this heavily infested planet in an unshielded vessel and a single missile from one of these uh, anti-air defense stations could absolutely cripple this ship hopefully not but uh it's entirely possible now i did do um a bit of extra mining while i was out in the sector i managed to pick up some cobalt do a short on that as well titanium and even a bit of Promethean as well. So hopefully we can manufacture some fuel uh, for this vessel once we get it upgraded and ready to go. But now we are on the hunt for Zascosium. An unguarded, undefended Zascosium deposit. I believe we can find one. There's one over there, but it's right next to a rocket place. As you can see, my cannon turrets, uh, oh, sorry, gat turrets are working over these drones just by flying near them. They're getting destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's delightful it's so delightful <laughs> also why i equipped my ship with like four thousand rounds um you know but three thousand remaining okay well there's plenty of deposits that are unguarded around here so we just have to fly around until we find one don't think that every single discosium and restroom deposit on this planet is guarded it would make sense. There's a gold deposit down there. It would make sense. Um, we're going to have to try and get underneath them, I think. The guns, I mean. There's a huge array of trenches and stuff along here. Um, there's a Zascosium deposit right there. We need Zascosium and a restroom. What's the bet in that one of these is a restroom and one of these is... Scosium or gold or something. Um, I think the only... Well, my best course of action is to probably park the ship. A column, it's really difficult to see the range. It's all melded in with the drones and everything else. But that, I think, is 900 meters away. Which is which is plenty of a way for me to park the ship here uh, safely. Ish. So I'm going to park here and hope the turrets can keep it safe for any wandering drones. Certainly, uh, give it a quick ping and make sure nothing's sneaking up upon me. Doesn't look like it. So I'll turn the thrusters off. What I am going to do is transfer uh, some of the Hammerhead's Pentaxid supply. This is very risky. <laughs> and it doesn't have Pentaxid deposits. Uh, so if I go through all my pentaxid on the nightshade here, I basically can't get out of here. So this is going to be interesting, but I need to be able to charge the shields, right? On the old nightshade. It's the only thing that has shields, so... Yeah. Um, there are, I think, pentaxid crystals on the ground on this planet. Um, somewhere. So if we need to go foraging, we can. Anyway, I need that as a Scosium deposit. I need an Arrestrum deposit. Shields are up. Let's do a trench run down here. And there's the AA battery there. Might be possible to get into that thing and disable it from within. I'd have to be very lucky to get underneath the guns, basically. But I don't know what that turret was shooting at, but it wasn't me. Which is concerning. Because what was it shooting at? Um, but yeah, it looks like we can get underneath them. I think it's shooting predators.
Okay, so we took a hit there, but nothing major. If we were in an unshielded vessel, we'd be completely screwed right now, but uh, we're not. We are in a shielded vessel. I just want to get rid of these last couple of drones. Let me hit the thing up here. Yeah, look at that, a restroom. Gold. If we could take out that air defense thing, we're good. We can absolutely mine all the restrooms as cozy we need. That's the mission then. Get rid of these proximity defenders. That's good range on the Gats, actually. 200 plus meters. Good range. Alright, cool. Large plasmas. Probably going to lose the loot on those, but that's okay. Quick check. Yeah, it doesn't look like the uh, hammerhead is under any kind of... <laughs> get wrecked. Uh, any under threat there? Uh, right, so... Yeah, I think they're shooting the overseers, look. Yeah, that's quite good. We can get underneath that while they're busy. Look at that! Yes! There you go. That's how you do it. Right, turn that off because that's blindingly bright. Okay, hopefully we can get the core in. The core out, rather. Without um, needing C4 or anything, because I don't have any of that. I don't have my own core on me either, so there's no cap. Oh, yeah, look at that. Perfect. Bingo. You gotta rush these things, man. Just rush them. Look at that. One disabled anti air, plus some magnesium. Probably actually create our own. Um, uh, C4 charges now. All those turrets are down dead. And that frees up. All these deposits. Ha 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 ha. Perfect. There we go. Right. Get out of here. Get the hammerhead over here. Get mining. Bingo. This Scosium deposit here is going to require some unique parking. We're going to have to do a hover. I think will be best. But that's fine. We can stay here. We can use our drone. Mine out the Zoscosium here. Hopefully we've got enough range. Connect to the container controller. There we go. Keep an ear out for the guns firing. There we go, Zoscosium. Bingo. Part one. And a restroom. Part two of our Zoscosium alloy requirements. Be difficult to see a restroom. Aim for the green blobs. And I may as well pick up some gold while I'm here. Not a bad haul. Uh, two restroom deposits, a single Zoscosium deposit, single gold deposit. I saw the titanium, um, cobalt, neo has been converted already. And the promethium that we picked up as well. So we've done pretty well for ourselves so far. Still, I've got one more stop before we head back to base and kit this thing out. And that is, and when we come back to... We'll be on moon here, where we picked up that crashed capital vessel earlier. I'm going to pick up some pentaxid from the very small deposits here. Now, this is much quicker than picking up those single little crystals that we find on the ground. Oops, I forgot to connect. My bad, there we go. Uh, but as you can see, yeah, we picked up 22 crystals already from this very small deposit. I'm going to pick up a few of these while I'm here, just so that we can fuel up both our ship, uh, the, uh, the, the hammerhead and the nightshade at the same time. Now, I've depleted every single pentaxid deposit on this planet. And what should happen next... Although I'm not quite sure how long this takes. What should happen next is a meteorite, pentaxid meteorite, should start falling to the surface of the moon here. And a single pentaxid meteorite will net us more pentaxid, certainly more than 169. I expect around about 2,000 raw pentaxid from a single meteorite. But uh, yeah, where and when it will land, that is a mystery at the moment. I guess we just have to wait. I got bored of waiting. Okay, so with the Zoscosium and Arrestrum now processing into our box here at back at base, should now be able to build huh. right yes i probably need to transfer over some of the neo over as well don't i um oh dear well the box is very much at the edge of its limit but i'm sure that's probably enough for us to build 
Oh. Damn. Well, maybe it's the gold then. Let's transfer some gold over. That'll solve it. Oh. Well. I'm sure that's it. And we can now build our... Yeah, uh, the crane out loud. Now what? Uh, probably the cobalt. Yeah. There's no cobalt in here. Okay. We'll transfer some of that over as well. Yeah. Okay. Now we should be able to build our new... Ah, for crying out loud. What now? You can build that. So what's your problem? Well, I honestly have no idea. It's got everything. It can build two of these. I'm almost certain of it. In any case, it's going to take a freaking age for this constructor to process all this ore. So I might just sleep it off. And you, the power, because of the usage here, is only going to last an hour and 25 minutes. If I sleep, the base runs out of power. Everything in the fridge goes off. Ship, on the other hand, seven and a half hours of power. I could transfer everything in the fridge over. I hope the solar panels are enough to keep this thing running for a little bit longer. I have two tier three CPU extenders ready to insert into the hammerhead. Bingo. There we go. We now have 1.5 million of available CPU points for our ship. More than enough to install the shields in the um in the um the hatch at the back. You know the uh access hatch in the rear the, the rear hatch. This one. Why? I just want to rotate it that way. I think that's so I can jump up and see it and stuff. Anyway there we go. Shields in the back door. Back door is protected. Lovely. And that eats up, hmm, yeah, not that much, actually. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the base apart and put the advanced constructor that's in the base in the hammerhead, just like that. And there we go. We now have an advanced constructor in our ship. Connect this up to the main container controller. And we have a world of crafting now. Oh, yes. Look at all of our options. Now that we're connected to a 320 KSU container, lots of space. All the ores and stuff like that that I've collected can now be contained in here, rather than having to ship them between a 16 KSU container that we had in the base. It was just not able to handle the volume of all the mining that I've done. Anyway, we've also got like a bit of pentaxid for the old pentaxid tank there. Almost a full tank with 69 remaining raw uh, pentaxid, which is the perfect amount of remaining pentaxid. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Well, I think we're good to go. Fuel, 72% oxygen. Pop that up. Fuel. Pop that up. And we are absolutely ready to go now. Okay. Sweet. So, our next mission then is probably to carry on the story and head to Siena. Um, and for some reason, I can't make sniper rifle rounds of all things. There we go. Unlock the sniper rifle. Oh, and that good. Unlock the sniper rounds. There we go. We want them for a heavy sniper. Um, what else are we short on? We got 219 shotgun shells, 1100. Uh, rifle rounds, plenty of multi tool and drill charges. One other thing let's unlock. And this has been a long time coming because I've been rocking around with a tier one multi tool this entire bloody time. Let's get a tier two multi tool. Hills, yeah, yeah. That's good. Now that I've done all the freaking digging and upgrading and stuff like that to get my ship going. Yeah, let's do that now. Ah, I should have put my current multi tool in the box. Then it would have saved some resources. Never mind. What's done is done. Bingo. A tier two multi tool. That's going to save some time. And uh, I can sell the other one if. And when we go to a trader next, speaking of which, it might be worth running through over to the pirates and seeing if they'll buy some of my guns and stuff. Don't forget as well, when you make modifications to your ship, you need to hit this little save template button down here to make sure those changes that you've made are saved to template. And if you need to use station services to repair or using a repair pad to repair your ship back to how it is, it repairs it back to how it is and not how it was before you save the template. Now this will include the new tier 3 
uh, CPU extensions and the shield and the constructor that I've added to the ship. I'm just waiting for the shields to go up and then we'll head off. And one final thing before we leave, to remove the waypoint for our shelter here. And I'll leave the core in it because I can't be bothered to get out and remove it. <laughs> All right, shields at 50%. Let's turn the thrusters on. That's the turrets, you dum dum. Thrusters on. And away we go. Off. Generators are hitting 36% usage while charging the shields and firing the main lift thrusters. Because the hammerhead is just that badass. And because I remain neutral with the pirates, I can head into their station and do some trading. Yes, take that, uh, take that oxygen boost. Take that insulation boost. I don't need those. This guy will buy projectile pistols, shotguns, SMGs, assault rifles, sniper rifles, pulse rifles, rocket launchers, and miniguns. And the light armor that I don't need. Sweet. Alright, so the busy trading done. Time to head off to Siena. See if we can find the item. First thing we do, paying. We're in a new system now. Oh, hello. I think that's the traders over there. It might actually be worth popping over there just to see what that is. We'll also discover the faction while we're there. Yeah, there we go. Discovered new faction. Trader Guild it is a gas refinery. Uh, I don't think there are any traders. Uh, there are a couple of traders in the gas refinery, actually. I don't think they're worthwhile. Um, but still, we can pop in and have a little look-see, can't we? We are here, after all. Why not have a little gander? We are in an AVA suit, um, so we're neutral by, stand by standard with the traders, so um, nothing should be shooting at us. Hello, Mr. Android. Yes, all their boxes are probably locked. Yeah, we don't want to be causing any trouble in this place. It will murder you very quickly, I know from experience. Yeah, we've got a couple of traders. Uh, mining space. How may I serve you? Show me your offers. This guy's got Satium ore for sale. <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> Look at that, ladies and gents. After I, I knew this was going to happen. I absolutely knew this was going to happen. We will find a source of Satium after we found all the Satium we needed for the ship. Yeah, it was going to happen. And there you go. I'm, I'm actually going to buy some because um, we don't actually have a source of Satium at all. Not like uh, that we can drill out. We can't exactly drill out 2,000 like we did Ziscosium or whatever. Um, so let's buy a crap load of Satium. How much can I buy for 82,000? Yeah, he's got a stock of 1,391. That's 50 grand's worth. Yeah, rip. I will buy. Thank you very much for all your Satium. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> uh, what are you selling there? Power plant. Uh, please show me your offers. He is buying... Oh, no, we can buy toxic liquid, toxic weight, and mutated substance. We can sell coolant, spare parts, radiation boosts, and robotics. Robotics are selling at a very nice price. We can buy them for around 2000 uh, $2, from the pirates. Now, I have some coolant and such, I think. Uh, seven coolant and six spare parts right here. And you can have them, please, because I need to make some money back. <laughs> Seven is a, a dismal thousand, and uh, six of those is a whopping 1,600. Well, you know, it's something at least. T2, uh, large T2 generator, that's the big boy, will sell for 54,000. So if you are swimming in resources and want to make a crap load of money, make about 894 large T2 generators and sell them for 54,000 a piece to this guy. I'll let you math the total for that one. It'll do quite nicely, I should imagine. Right, there we go. Um, more trading and stuff done. Lovely. I'm going to go now before one of your androids has a fit and shoots me in the head. Okay, bye. Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Sienna. I'm receiving a weak UCH positional signal. I'll add a marker on your radar and HUD. Here we go, the UCH Titan. Titan? Titan? Titan has been detected. And uh, there's quite a lot of Polaris presence on here, actually. He said the Xerax were uh, very interested in that wreck, so... Surprised there isn't more Zaraxian presence. Still, uh, this planet's 
benefits from promethium, titanium, iron, copper, silicon, cobalt, and neodymium. And whatever this thing is down here. That looks like a residence, I think. Or maybe one of their labs. Settlement, yeah. That'll have a settlement trader in it as well. You can sell consoles too, probably. Anyway, here we are. We can see the front and back and mid of the Titan all in this area. Uh, it seems the Titan broke into several parts. It does, it does, it seems it does. Okay. Any results, Ida? Not yet. Oh dear. You should make a flyby, all three parts. Oh, I just did the front. Bingo. Ooh, we'll do the mid. Guns are opening up on something. And here's the rear. Oh, the rear does not look good. That looks kind of messed up. Okay, front part. There's a way in. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, we've run out of time today. I'm going to have to stop recording at this point. So we're going to have to wait until the next episode to find out what happened to Titan. And what's next for us in this little adventure. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Thank you very much for watching. And hopefully I'll see you next time. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.